So, <clears throat> good morning and welcome to our sixth conference. Let, let me thank Old Vesperi's Homecoming Committee for inviting us to hold the conference here. Let me introduce our board member, you know, Dr. Shefali Dostidar. Pratibda, Pratibda, where is Pratibda? Someone. Pratibda Zutta. Uh, Dr. Tom Lilly on the back. Uh, uh, Dr. Dilip Nath, who is not here yet. And Raminda, Ramin Nandi is here. And Dr. Rudranath Talukdar uh, is here. He is in our first session. He is Shubo. Shubo. Open the door. Oh. So that's Pratibda. Pratibda. <coughs> our project coordinator is Shubo, Shubo Dasida. As <coughs> I thought I will add this, as many have misconceptions about our resources, I thought I'll take a minute to remind you that we don't get a penny either from our campus or from any organization. It is completely supported by people like you and our book sale. As I may not get a second chance, let me thank the following for their donation. It ranges from a thousand dollars or more <clears throat> since our June newsletter to one or more dollars. Here are the names in order of highest donation excluding today's con contribution. Uh, Shefali Dasidar and her husband, Dr. Rudranath Talukdar, Dr. Joita Dostidar, Pratip Dasgupta, Jagon and Asha pa Dr. Jahun, Jagon and Asha Pahuja, Dr. Tom and Teresa Lili, Milita Chandra Das, Shikant Mukherjee, Professor Ray Roden, Professor Jill Hamburg, Udayan Chattopadhyay, Probi Rai, <coughs> Uruna Advani, Shapon and Dr. Rekha Gangapadhyay, Shishadri Gupta, Rupan Devi Bhumik, Dr. Partho Dash, Professor Joseph and Irene Hainar, <coughs> Mathias Rosario, Navanit Raman, Sushila Reinhardt, Padma Saini, Shubo and Sumeda Dastidar, Laura Hilly, Linda Reni, <coughs> Alex Leboff, Ranjit Banerjee, Nirmal Bhattacharya, Ed Lu, J. Hyman, Dr. Nuru Novi, Professor Rajan Anantaraman. If I miss anybody, you know, I don't think so, please forgive me. When we have our, our annual uh, monthly events, we have many people bring in food. So we have food donation from Binapani and Piyoto's Day, Sumeda Dastidar twice, Shefali Dastidar twice, Sushila Reinhardt, Padma Saini twice. In addition, our office is supported by Dastidar Family Savings. I want to take a few minutes to sh to show you a, couple, a few things. So I'll I'll be trying to load up here. As I load up, uh, but let me tell you uh, that that there are some books um, on for sale. For one book memoir, entire proceed goes to uh, the sale of the. Um, Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, <clears throat> entire book go goes to our partition project. <clears throat> In case you pick up one, please let us know, as we'll send you a thank you note for tax deduction. Our partition document project is <clears throat> is tax. Um, uh, yeah, we don't. Uh, it's, it's what do you call it? tax um, exempt. Exempt. Sorry. Yeah. I'm you have the block. Uh, it was released in India by Shefali. In India, too, it is sold for ten dollars, US ten dollars. Uh, as we avoided mail cost by hand carrying, we are able to offer you at the same price. Five dollars from the other book, Mukti, goes to Ishpat. Both are connected to partition. Please take a journal, newsletter, and other literature that are on display. All proceeds from the handkerchief for the duster, they call it duster, goes to Probini Foundation, which supports education at orphanages and schools in India and Bangladesh. They are <clears throat> made by our students in India. We have some some uh, changes in our conference as some folks haven't been able to come. You know that. I'm going to show our web uh, and other stuff in a minute, uh, in a second as, as soon as I'm able to load it. Uh, <clears throat> later I'm going to discuss about the YouTube videos much in the third session. After several hackings, Shikant and Shubo have fixed the way. Please give them a very big hand. It is still, still under 
process. Uh, it's very frustrating. It's probably third time we have been hacked. And once it's hacked, all the all those things are gone. And who has time to look for what we said in 2011, 2012, 2014? So it's really very, very frustrating and time consuming and costly too. Uh, <clears throat> after several hackings, okay, we mentioned if you have ideas, please share with them. If you have suggestions for next year's speaker, please let us know. Let us give a big hand to Mr. Ushama Sheikh, um, who is providing us with bagel and cream cheese from his own funds. Do not confuse with campus funds. <laughs> Our office is in, is in Jamaica, Queens. Please visit the office where we have monthly events and a modest library and a one-room partition museum and a guest room. In case any of your friends need a space to stay in New York City near the subway, they may contact Shubo. We'll be asking for you for next year's papers for mm, next year's journal. I'm going to hand over to Dr. Tom Lilly, but before that, just let me let me share just two two uh, mm. so. Okay, so so here is the web. Now we have four. It is under construction, as you will see, um, and uh, and uh, and uh, it's coming. And now we have four menus, but they want to have more more menus here. Uh, so they are going to add five more menus. And if you have any suggestion, any idea, uh, please give it to them. Now we have only connection with, as you can see, uh, contact us, contact with Twitter. Supposedly Twitter is a big thing, you know. Uh, I started with Twitter, I stopped it. And I, surprisingly within a month I had a couple of hundred followers. I didn't know why. To, but anyway, but I just have not have time. But YouTube later on I'm going to share with you. Uh, it needs a little more time. And the other thing, since Raising money is very hard. This is what I also wanted to share with you. Many of you, all of you, or many of you search through Google. Why? But if you go, this is another, it's a Yahoo company's search engine is good search. Okay? So if you go there first time and tell, they will ask you who you want to help. Okay? Then if you say, uh, we have to put our full name, Indian Subcontinent Partition Documentation Project. It takes you a quarter of a second, it searches until it gives you the address. Is it in 8056 Persons Boulevard, Jamaica? Once you, it, it says, then it remembers you. So anytime you search, then let's say, you will see how much I have. Uh, and also here you have good shop. Basically every com corporation in America is included there. So, but let me go to the part of what I was going to say. Sorry. Uh, so, anytime you do a search, let's say how much money I have raised here, it tells you $53.94. So, each time I search, suppose I search here SUNY, Old Westbury, <coughs> you will see it will go to uh, 93.94 cents, it will increase by one cent. 95 cents. So every time you search, it adds, as you see on the top, it tells you where where uh, you have, how much you're raising. Plus, the good shop is part is when you buy things. That is to say, I, we traveled, we bought our, we bought we buy tickets through internet. So anytime you go to good shop, in every travel company, every airline is listed, not only that, they will also all say good shop. Suppose you drive here to travel, you see Travelocity. We bought our ticket to Travelocity, they get 3% of the ticket value. So I have to buy any sort, any other. Plus, what happened to Travelocity when you do, yeah. you also have sometimes coupon here. So, so the hotels I bought, 
sometimes pay three dollars, two dollars, anything. You know, raising money is very hard. So please, please, if you get a chance, do that. And if you do a regular word search or other search, uh, so that would be a good way of helping us. Writing a check is fine. We would always welcome. But then, then uh, helping us other ways would be very, very helpful. All right. So with that, I'll end here and I'll invite our board member, Tom Lilly, to come and, and share. Good morning, everybody. This has become like a regular part of fall for for us, right? The, the leaves start to change. It gets colder. It must be time for uh, for for the ISPAT conference. Uh, so I have the the uh, pleasure and the honor of officially releasing the uh, ISPAT journal. Uh, ISPAD does so many good things, you can lose track of all the things that it does. But we have this conference, and uh, there are the uh, recording of the, the personal histories on YouTube, and there's the social media presence. Um, and we have uh, this journal, which I've lost track of how many years we've been doing now, but we've been doing it for a while now, and uh, it's it's developed into uh, an impressive 40-page uh, journal, and uh, the articles this year, there are many of them, starting with a, a review of last year's conference, uh, then articles on uh, childhood memories of partition, the death of Mahatma Gandhi, um, uh, partition and dislocation of ethnic groups, uh, mass starvation uh, by British colonials, uh, partition and politics of identity and extremism, uh, uh, national and ethnic minorities in Poland, uh, and an article here by someone named Sachi Dastadar on uh, Roma triumph and reality of assimilation in Europe. Uh, so it really has developed into something that uh, we can all be proud of. Those of us who didn't write articles, we still support this. Uh, and so I'm, I'm very happy to officially announce uh, our release this year's uh, ISPAD conference journal. I should probably introduce someone who's next. Yeah, but at least, at least formally release it to... Uh, Dr. Uh, um, uh, uh, you're supposed to do it too. I formally <laughs> release. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I'm sorry somebody wanted to come, but they're in Brooklyn. I said, don't come now. <laughs> she is in Brooklyn. Uh, uh, Patterson's. They want to come, but they're in Brooklyn. Uh, so I said, it's, it'll be too late. Uh, but this time, I don't know whether it's all, even in, in journal. We had about plus minus 20, uh, 20 um, of which after review I sent in to uh, all to make comments. There are people who didn't correct it, comment, and so we didn't include naturally them. So nine of them are included. Um, all of them are very interesting. I, I thought one <clears throat> that actually even Dr. Eddie um, also connected with me is from a from uh, from um, the British during the British rule in India. Uh, this gentleman uh, and, and he said he finds that starvation was a was a official policy, and how many people and, and he, he he calculates from British document itself how many Indians were killed from when the British first came in 1850s into 1947 amounted to 60 million. So read that. Uh, and accidentally, he have, I found out that he is my classmate. He went to the engineering school, but he said, my passion is now history. Uh, so we connected, um, and he lives in 
in, in, in uh, Virginia. So I just thought maybe next time you can ask him to come and present. It's a very... Did very you write an article? Sorry? You wrote an article? Yeah, you have the article there. Um, uh, I forget the basic book. Yeah. yeah, you'll see. Mm. Uh, Pre-partition colonial era, British colonial style. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ram Tony Mitro, 11. Um, my, my calculation, which was back all the envelope, was 18. Okay, so, so, but, but, so I have to, he has, okay, this is the one, and he starts uh, with, and actually it was, somebody sent to me, and now a lot of people send me articles for reprinting and reading, um, and this was sent to me uh, from, uh, I forget where, it must be India or somebody, um, or, or, and, but it was republished in, in a Yugoslavia or not just Serbian journal, uh, Serbian, from Serbia in English, English journal. So then I tried to contact Serbia and our professor has contacted Serbia and he called and, uh, and then, then, then he says this guy lives in, 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 in New, in the USA. Then I started to look somebody, then I, through my network, I found out he's my classmate. So I, I wrote to a class and I couldn't find his, he doesn't attend B College Alumni Association, there is one. So then I wrote to someone back in, in um, India, who, a classmate who is a governor, and he then gave me this contact, so that's how it is. So let me now ask um, Mr. Sheikh um, to come and uh, say a few words. And then, uh, and you can distribute your goodies. Good morning, everybody. My name is uh, Osama Sheikh. I am the Assistant Vice President for Student Affairs uh, here uh, at uh, SUNY College at Westbury. And uh, it is my honor and privilege to welcome you all here uh, as part of the, uh, on behalf of our Vice President of Student Affairs, uh, Dr. Wayne Edwards, as well as uh, our uh, Panther Pride Homecoming uh, Committee. Uh, it is always wonderful to have an academic component added to our homecoming. So uh, thank you again uh, for coming. Thank you all for uh, uh, participating and contributing uh, towards uh, uh, this uh, uh, this project. Um, uh, this subject matter is pretty uh, near and dear to my heart uh, as well. Uh, I am um, the great grandson of uh, Sheikh Abdul Majid Sindhi, uh, who was a, uh, a writer, journalist, and a politician um, during during that time and. Uh, the last post that he held was the Minister of Sindh in 1940. So he was born in Tata in uh, 1889 uh, and uh, um, died in Hyderabad in, in Pakistan, um, in, uh, I believe in 1978, if I'm not mistaken. So uh, I have some wonderful memories of my grandmother sharing stories of her time uh, as a child. Um, she has a wonderful story of a, of a meeting and, and uh, uh, sitting in Gandhi's lap uh, as my uh, great-grandfather was um, with other uh, politicians. So. Um, the partition as well, uh, as, as we all know, uh, has a pretty uh, a violent history on both sides of the fence. Uh, unfortunately, uh, in the news uh, now, Kashmir has become a big uh, topic again and again. Those uh, echoes of the partition again still uh, remain to this day and, and the destructive nature of, uh, uh, of the partition is still unfortunately very alive in memories of uh, multiple generations. So again, thank you all for the work that you all do here and I hope that these dialogues do result in um, uh, in, in a balanced discussion from, from both sides, from all sides, I should say. Uh, and uh, again, thank you for all of your uh, academic pursuit in this area. Um, uh, as part of the uh, committee, we also um, brought some uh, t-shirts as well as some giveaways in the back. Please feel free to take uh, whatever uh, uh, suits you or your needs. Um, and uh, again, thank you so much for uh, coming here. Uh, at the end of the conference, uh, once you uh, have uh, completed your lunch, please come to our uh, Clark Center. Uh, because of the uh, weather uh, outside, we are unable to hold our Panther Fest outdoors. We have moved it inside into our uh, athletic facility, Clark Center. Uh, there are going to be a lot of uh, uh, fun things going on. Uh, so uh, again, uh, if you get the opportunity, if you have the time, we would love to have you uh, come by and uh, enjoy some, uh, some festivities as part of uh, uh, Panther Fest. And again, if you have remainder remainder of the day, if you would like to hang out with us, Continually, uh, we have our closing banquet at 4.30 uh, p.m. Um, and then at 7 p.m. we have our Old West, West Prairie's Got Talent, our talent show, which also includes our uh, homecoming court uh, that's going to be 
presented and all the winners are going to be introduced. So again, it is a, it is a nice full day for us. Uh, you all, of course, are all welcome to attend to as many or as little uh, as you're able to do. But again, thank you so much for coming, and I hope you all have a wonderful day. Thank, thank you. When you went to school in Sim, you went to school in Sim? I, I'm Karachi. I was born and raised in Karachi. I came to the United States when I was about 13. So, early years, was your schooling in Sindhi or in Urdu? Urdu. It was Urdu in English. I went to an English school with Urdu and no, English. Group. No Sindhi. Uh, Sindhi. Because you're Sindhi. I am Sindhi. And uh, <laughs> I. Uh, I always joke with my parents that, that I blame them for, for me not learning the language of Sin, uh, Sindhi language because all of my cousins um, speak fluent Sindhi. Um, so when they don't want me to know what they're talking about, they speak in Sindhi and I become the, uh, the outlier of the group going, uh, uh, uh. uh so it is, uh, 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 it is part of my heritage. Unfortunately, I do not speak the language. Um, I can, I'm, I'm dangerous enough to understand just enough to, to get by, but I, I cannot speak uh, the language. But my, my mom speaks uh, Sindhi, Punjabi, uh, Urdu. Uh, my uncles speak uh, uh, those languages as well. And um, for, Because for a little while, my parents, um, all uh, my grandmother and my grandfather lived in Lahore in uh, uh, Pakistan. So uh, Punjabi, Punjabi yeah. uh, was, was the language there. So, uh, But yeah, at, at school, Sindhi, was not um, a language, I, uh, because I went to a private English school, uh, Sindhi was not uh, a language that they, they focused on. Yeah, but, yeah, that's why I'm asking, because in India, even every state would have their language. Correct, correct. Uh, and if, actually, there's Sindhi schools in India, too. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, from uh, the Hyderabad on. Um, no, and, but actually, uh, Hindi ref Sindhi refugees, the schools were Sindhi refugees. Oh, really? Already, they were, they were, they were, they were they Interesting, very cool, very cool. Okay. Hmm? Hmm? I, I'm just telling him that I would like to um, make a greeting. Okay, he wants to make a greeting, but you'll have a chance to. Okay. No, no, All right, I, any question? Thank you again. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Join us for a lunch and we go to lunch together. I don't know how well we are. Yeah, okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Just uh, real quick. You might just think that uh, a conference speech for an event hosted by an NGO like the ISPA project being given by someone uh, honored to be, uh, the title of project coordinator, a title I have been, for for lack of a better term, branded with here in the course of my work at ISPA. Um, that first sentence was indeed an attempt at a humorous beginning. That's admittedly an effort to gloss over the fact that I have more than just a few butterflies in my stomach speaking to all of you, and as I'm holding <coughs> on to this uh, speech paper for dear life. Um, <laughs> as this is a conference organized by the Indian Subcontinent Documentation Project, or the affectionate acronym ISPAD, um, the, uh, I, I cannot proceed without uh, thanking SUNY Old Westbury who had graciously given a makeshift office in the beginning of our development and uh, we and it had still keeps like today um, our conference a part of its Panther Pride festivities annually. Um, I must also thank our board of directors for uh, running the show and certainly thank the individuals of, who dreamed of, worked for, and saw ISFAD's inception and growth. Um, individuals who remain with and support ISFAD to this very day, uh, irrespective of their physical location. Um, <clears throat> and just next up for my speech of thanks, he's perhaps known by all of, not perhaps, he is known by all of you. Um, ISFAD's chair conceptualizer, an executive chair of the board of directors and a distinguished service professor um, here, uh, Professor Dr. Sochi Vasile. Um, and he's, he's the impetus behind everything that ISPAD has done, um, is going, is doing, and without question, whatever ISPAD does in the future. Um, and finally, all of you here today, deserve so much gratitude for showing those of us who are living, breathing, and working ISPA 24-7. Um, 
thank you for, in a sense, validating our efforts. And many of us are breathing a sigh of relief that our work has not been for naught. Um, and all that being said, thank you for this time. Thank you so, so why did you do this? You come here and Shabali, you start with your first session. All right. Yeah. 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 Well, our good morning and uh, thank you all for coming. And uh, our board members already know Dr. Salukdar. He is from Texas. He is a physician. Uh, is a medical doctor by profession and he is also a human rights activist. And not only that, uh, uh, Rudro is uh, very much involved and very much supportive of our spot. And uh, having said that, uh, let me go back. He was born in Uttarakhand in India. He went to medical school in Calcutta National Medical School. After he came here to this country, he attended a few uh, medical schools for his specialties. Uh, for example, University of Pennsylvania, East Tennessee State University, Vanderbilt University, and MD Anderson Cancer Center. His specialty is uh, cancer oncology. He now practices in Texas, and he flew all the way from Texas to attend and to talk about this. He got his interest in reading and writing from his father, and he was very much influenced from his mother, and all this partition in India, and all these stories. And he is very much involved with uh, human rights uh, activities, and he is also president of an organization. It calls Hindu Mahashava, Hindu Mahashava of America, he is the president of that. Now, his topic will be current trends of social politics in India. So it's a very recent uh, what is going on in politics in India. So having said that, uh, Marudro is allowed to talk about 30 minutes and then we'll have question and answer. Please try to be precise about your questions so that he will give you a precise answer. Right? Thank you. <laughs> um, I do note that, uh, thank you very much for that wonderful introduction, Shafaridi, and uh, thank you for inviting me. Um, but I do note that uh, when I prepared the talk on my plane trip from Texas to here, <laughs> Um, I assume that most people would know the events and people that I'm talking about. So that is not true, of course. I realize that now. So if you do not understand what I'm saying, then please do stop me and ask me because I, I don't know what you don't know. <coughs> All right? So. I am not really a human humanities student, and therefore my approach to it may be a little bit different than what uh, a, a professional <coughs> person would be used to. So please abide by me for that. I. I come to this topic because of an abiding interest in the broad, broader themes that define and modify and shape our culture. When I say our culture, I'm specifically as president of Hindu Mahasabha of America, which means Hindu Congress of America. Uh, I'm, as a practicing Hindu, I speak to it as a Hindu culture. But let me emphasize from the get-go that I'm extremely fortunate to be speaking in the U.S. and I am—I became a U.S. citizen as soon as I could, 
and I am very, very happy to be supportive of the Constitution of, of the United States, especially the First Amendment right, where it codifies the right to free speech. And that right, I'm sad to say, is all too often found missing in the country of my origin, which is India. <coughs> So I will take you through a brief journey of seemingly disparate events and then try to tie them together into a whole within the social political context. Please interrupt me if you don't know what I'm talking about. So speaking of the political, so India got independence in 1947 and India since that time, the, the country has been ruled essentially for all but a few years by the Congress Party. Uh, and India has been enthralled with the Congress Party under the impression that they were working towards independence at the time. Many in that party undoubtedly were working towards independence, but in general the leadership embodied specifically by Nehru was quite concerned about itself and its place in history. It's true for Mohandas Gandhi as well. Uh, Mohandas Gandhi was interviewed by Sarojini Naidu at one time uh, after independence in 1940, towards the end of 1947. And uh, she came out with a famous quote, if you do not know, that it costs a lot for India to keep Gandhi in poverty. Uh, but Gandhi said that you are looking at history when you talk to me. So he was well aware of that issue. So, Congress's proclivity to dismiss popularly elected leaders started not after 1947, but prior to that when Bose was successfully removed from the presidentship of the party. Um, again, stop me if you don't know who Bose is or was. Um, I'm sorry, I didn't understand the quote, you know, if you can just with the Gandhi quote. So oh, this yeah. Sarojini Naidu was the governor of, uh, I believe, of UP at the time, and Gandhi used to live in his village with his goats and his uh, nieces, and uh, would not participate in the government. So Sarojini Naidu, uh, at one point in time, gave an interview to, I believe, the statesman, which is a newspaper and said it costs a lot to keep Gandhi in poverty. Thank you. So, Bose was removed from the presidency of the party by diktat, not by, not by election. And from that time forward, the Congress party internally monopolized power. Sir. I think you mentioned the full name in case someone doesn't know. So, Bhaskandra Bose, yeah. he was a... a he was a very well-known figure in Indian independence movement and formed the Indian National Army at the, towards the end of the Second World War and tried to fight the British with a uh, ragtag army formed with uh, deserters from the British Indian Army and with equipment that was given to him by the Japanese and some of it from the Germans. He, he reached, <coughs> he reached from the eastern side of India, he reached into India, but was defeated. Um, so, <coughs> the Congress, after having successfully figured out how to internally monopolize power, then used it over time to progressively create a cult around itself in general and the Nehru family in particular. It sustained its hold on the Indian imagination largely on the back of goodwill associated with the independence movement. And then, after Indira Gandhi, who was the daughter of Nehru, survived the syndicate, uh, if you don't know what that means, uh, ask me, and, and the war with Pakistan and the emergency the party eventually figured out how to mold the media and its image. And if you read an excellent book by, oh, my brain is freezing right now. It's an American author. 
uh, Howard Zinn, I believe, um, about uh, consent in the media. Okay. I believe it's Howard Zinn. Anyway, and if you read that, you will see how the Congress has done it. Um, so, client, you know, editors were given plump posts and assignments and recalcitrant ones were bought out, brought over, or otherwise marginalized. And this has been well documented um, just very recently when Modi, uh, BJP, won power, uh, won the election. Uh, the putative information and broadcasting minister was interviewed on TV before he had actually assumed office. And one of the very senior journalists talking to him who has since passed away said, would you in the BJP go after the journalists like the Congress did? And that was a very telling statement that I, I, I found. It was not remarked upon by anybody else uh, in the papers thereafter. And of course, he died. But it told me that this was a common phenomenon. The Congress Party had had reason from the previous to independence to fear its monopoly and power. And, and the reason was it, it was being sniped at from two, two, two sides. One was the Muslim League, which was a creation essentially of the British in order to keep pressure on the Congress. And one was uh, the Hindu Mahasabha in India at the time. During the provincial elections in the 1930s, which the British engineered um, on the basis of religion, Hindu Mahasabha got about 25 to 27% of the vote. Did not win many seats, but did get a lot of the vote. The British had clearly identified Hindu Mahasabha at the time as being the primary, primary impediment to partitioning of the Indian subcontinent. This has been shown by the AD camp of Lord Mountbatten, Narendra Singh Sarela, who was a minor prince uh, of, of a region in Rajasthan. And he was the AD camp of, uh, he's still living as it happens. In, in the UK, and he wrote a wonderful book, The Untold Story of Partition, um, which I did read. And uh, he used. What's his name? Narendra Singh Sarila. S A R I L A. And the, the book is called The Untold Story of Partition. It has been re reviewed very recently by Janet Levy. Um, I forget what her blog is called. Also, by another author called Anurupa Chinar, who has uh, done a biography of uh, Savarkar. They've come to the same con conclusions going over British uh, records. So, Congress, in conjunction with the British, worked very hard to diminish the mass of other influence and systematically set about implementing a strategy of re reducing their vote share in the provincial elections. And in this, they were in league with the Muslim League uh, candidates. There were strong whispers. Um, people who are from Bangladesh here will know about Master Das in the Chittagong Arsenal case. So there were strong whispers that uh, the Congress aided in the discovery of Master Dai in, in that and in Satyendranath Sanyal in the Kakori and Benares conspiracy cases. If you don't know what they are, the Kakori case was a case where a armament train was um, robbed and the armaments were taken and the people, the, the revolutionaries were trying to get some arms and ammunitions for themselves. Um, 
he happens to be my uncle. Sachin Dasanya. He was he was given he was sent to solitary confinement in the island prison of Andaman twice. So certainly the whispers were very very credible that somebody had betrayed uh, these people when Chandrasekhar Azad was killed in Allahabad. Um, he actually, this, this gentleman, Chandrasekhar Azad, is a very famous person in Indian independence movement. And he had had a meeting at my grandfather's uh, residence in Allahabad and had left and then somebody identified him and the British surrounded him and shot him. So uh, somebody betrayed him. Uh, be that as it may. Uh, S.P. Mukherjee, Shah Prasad Mukherjee, who formed the Bharati Jansan, which was also a Hindu outfit, uh, eventually joined the Nehru Congress and had gone to Kashmir, and the whispers were very loud that he was done in uh, and, and, and uh, murdered. In fact, it is not a whisper. We actually know the nurse who administered the fatal shot uh, injection. He was allergic to penicillin. It was well known in his medical history, and he was given a shot of penicillin while in jail in Kashmir. And we actually know of the nurse who did it, and she committed suicide later on because she was she felt so guilty. Maybe you could, can I continue? Yes. Just for our knowledge, can you tell us a little bit and why he went there and what was his, 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 his uh, uh, what was wrong that he went there? Follow what I'm saying, that is. So in 19, yes. In 1947, uh, Kashmir, as Jammu and Kashmir as a state, had decided on standstill agreements between Pakistan and India 